My journey actually started, I'd say about seven years ago. I was contemplating the fact that eventually I would retire. And so I've been praying and fasting about it and saying, Lord, you need to show me what I'm supposed to do. Because this thing about retirement, just not really soaking in, you know, as if you're not going to be involved in the work. And I like to study and I present a lot on Bible prophecy. And so one of my prayers was this. I decided that, that I wasn't going to pray and ask God to lead me into something that I just wanted to do because I felt like doing it. My prayer was, God, show me where you're working and put me in that work. That way I know that I'll be doing what you want me to do. And so my search took me to the Internet. You know, of course, the Internet has a lot of resources that are available. And uh, I checked out a, a other um, lifestyle centers to see what they had to offer. And I even visited a few. But uh, each one that I contacted, it was just something about it that just didn't fit. And I was talking to another pastor who's involved in uh, the medical missionary work. And he's been very influ he's been very influential and very supportive. And so again, I continued to fast and pray, and and finally one Friday night, uh, I was looking for some testimonies, and the testimonies took me to Modern Manor. And I went to Modern Manor, clicked on the website, and I think I shared this with your secretary, and I clicked on it, and I saw some of the products and stuff. I said, well, let me just try the products and see how they handle shipping and stuff. You know, it's everything in order. And so I did and everything came quickly. I said, oh man, I only had to wait three days for my products. And so I kept on looking and then of course, right there on the home page, as you scroll down to the bottom, it says Danny Vieira videos. So oh, he got some videos. And so I clicked on there you know, I started watching the Bella Vita testimonies and oh, th those were inspiring. You know, anytime I wanted to pick me up, I'm looking at the testimonies. And so from that, uh, I continued to look and then I, I, I think I, I, I think about uh, uh, maybe a month or two passed. And uh, one day I was just praying and asking God to show me something else and he, he said, you see that little part on the website where it says risen? Click on that. And I clicked on that and I saw about the program because I, I, then I clicked on the video. I saw your wife, Charmaine. She was talking to a graduate from a previous program. I said, that's it. That's where I need to go. And I got to thinking about it and I talked to my wife about it. And I, I said, yeah, that's it. And the more and more I thought about it, I said, that's where you want me to go. You want me to learn how to do it. Because over the years, I've been pastoring for 37 plus years. And so I've been involved in pastoral work. I've worked at uh, educational institution. Uh, I've worked with the students and staff and you know, a lot of professional people, but never in this type of work. And as a pastor, you know, you're managing a lot of different departments. And even in some churches, they'll have the health and temperance department. But they may do just a little bit of this, but not the whole package. And so my prayer began to be, okay, Lord, if this is where you want me to go, then you got to show me how to do it. You got to provide. You got to show me that this is exactly what you want. And so through a series of events and situations, uh, uh, when I was in college, I had a double major. I was in theology and social work. And so for the past five years, I've been working in social work in a career center. And so that job ended. And so I said, okay, I have nothing else to hold me back. Where you want me to go, Lord? And next thing you know, I'm calling Sylvia. 
I'm signing up for the, uh, that's right, for, you know, to do that first portion of the, of the uh, RISEN program. Uh, I did all the, I, as a matter of fact, I did the 18 classes in about, a, I'd say about a week and a half, you know, so I did all that. Silver says, oh boy, you are fast. I said, let's make it happen. And so she told me, well, I'm gonna put your name on the list. I said, it's great. And one thing led to another. And so uh, being a pastor, I had an idea about medical missionary work, but not necessarily how to really put it all together. I've had some of the books, you know, and oftentimes I use many of the publications just as a reference point to probably help someone in my family or even a church member but not necessarily in terms of ministry. And so when I came here, uh, your son Daniel picked us up at the airport. Uh, you know, I met some of the other guests and you know, that was good and, and you get here and uh, you know, Sunday everybody's talking about that last meal that you're gonna get because you're not gonna eat anything for the next five days. And I uh, wish that didn't really bother me because I had already prayed and asked God. I said, all right now, Lord, now, you know, I have, my, I have my own routine. I like to do certain things and, you know, yeah, I like to watch the news. I like to tie it in the prophecies. So, I said, well, no, I, so my prayer was, Lord, I, I said, I'll tell you what. I said, help me to stay focused on medical missionary work and that only. That's exactly what I did. I didn't take any extra books. I just brought just what I needed so nothing would distract me. I didn't watch the news or any, all of, any of that stuff. I just kept my mind focused. And so when we started the program that Monday morning and you gave us our manuals that outlined the entire program, I'll never forget it, Monday and Tuesday where you were talking about um, you can take uh, this portion of the program colors, covers the Bella Vita 10-day cleanse. The, and we can use that, use that to implement in our own program. And then the rest of the portion is dealing with Risen. And then you started the, those first five days. I'm just going to deal with that aspect of it because as a pastor, we're always thinking about organization and how we can put it all together. And, and infrastructure is so very, very important. And so once you put that manual in my hand, and I understood all of that. I looked, I, I perused that all Monday and Tuesday night. I had what I came for. I didn't have to do anything else. I was satisfied. But nevertheless, you know, uh, uh, after watching other testimonies and learning about what actually goes on in a program, I saw that as a, as a risen student, I was in more than just a student role. I got a chance not only to be a student, but I got to be able to see how I would actually function as the director of my own program. And then going behind the scenes and being able to work with the staff and seeing how everything goes on. Uh, you talked about in the class what it takes to prepare for a program, all of that's very, very important because that type of uh, logistical information can create all kind of damage for someone who's never done it before. And so that was very beneficial. And, and of course, <laughs> the daily routine. I mean, there's nothing you can do about that in terms of the effect that it has on someone, but it's very beneficial. I think it, I've oftentimes had different cleanses and so forth, and I've done fast, but nothing like this and being able to uh, take, take, take the different drinks, the, the Formula One and the Formula Two and the Poultice. And I remember one of your videos, I think it was the Bella Vita movie where you talked about, we packed that colon. And I got to thinking about that, I said, man, he's stuffing this stuff down me. And then we're drinking the carrot juice and the, and the, and the paratox and the blood and the blood purifier and all the different juices. And really, you really don't get hungry. You don't have a chance to get hungry. And it's designed to deal with cravings and so forth. And another aspect, which I really uh, uh, thought a lot about, I didn't think I'd be able to do it because of all the, all the fluid. I actually looked at it between 
uh, the cleanse and the detox, all of that, the water, we drink over a gallon of water plus another gallon of juices. That's two gallons plus. And I said, man, there's no way I'm going to be able to run. <laughs> and every day, the enforcer was right there with you. Everybody know who I'm talking about. I'm not going to mention his name, but he's a good guy. I'm talking about John. <laughs> but John made sure, you know, he helped to make sure that we was out there doing what we're supposed to do. And uh, so we had a chance to go out and exercise and come back from the exercise. You get in the gym. And the, see, the beauty about that is you don't have to wonder what do you have to do. The program's already laid out there for you. There's no, there's no opportunity to be bored at any, at any time because you have something to do and you have the freedom to do it, but at the same time, there's structure. But what's really beneficial is the fact that you got 11 other people doing the same thing that you're doing. So you can't forget because if you think that you might forget, someone's gonna remind you what you're supposed to be doing. And so that's the, that's the, that is a blessing. So uh, another thing that I liked about the program is this. And I, you know, outside of the instruction that, that we received from you and all of that, I think another thing is the benefit of interacting with the other guests because they bring uh, talents and gifts from different parts of the country, the world, that we all don't necessarily have, but by interacting with each other, I've gotten all kind of ideas and benefits because you're learning what they're doing in their places, in their churches, in their cities, and what they'd like to do. And so a lot of good information I have gotten just from the interaction. And, and, and as always, it's, it's very encouraging to know that somebody else has the same mindset as you. Another benefit as a pastor that, uh, that I have have received from this program. I have always really wanted to see a, a, a ministry whereby I could follow the model plan of Jesus. And I've never been able to do it but for, for various reasons. But, you know, you read in the scriptures where it says Jesus was preaching and teaching and healing. All three of those. And I said, look, so you want me in my retirement years to do it all over again, only follow your plan. And that's it. So I feel that coming here to the Risen program, interacting with you, Danny, uh, uh, even though when I met you the you know, first time in person, I felt like I already knew you because of what was on the videos, what I had a chance to view earlier. Um, I wouldn't change anything. Uh, I'm definitely going to encourage pastors to be a part of this program, to get involved and, and come. Uh, in the church that I, I'm with, uh, young pastors who are preparing for the ministry. Uh, because I've done the work of a literature evangelist and I was the, the director of a department, so I taught Christian salesmanship. And so I would oftentimes encourage many young men, if you're gonna be a pastor, you need to be doing the, the work of a literature evangelist. But I'm also gonna encourage you, listen, at some point in your matriculation school, you need to set aside two weeks, maybe during the summertime, something to fit in with, uh, you know, how you structure the various programs for the RISEN program and do this. This needs to be a part of it. I think a young man who wants to get into ministry, if he's not doing this, he's really not doing the, 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 the type of ministry that Jesus demonstrated. The Bible says in 1 Peter 2, verse 22, chapter 2, verse 22, that Jesus Christ left us, left us an example that we should follow his steps. And I read a statement in the writings of Ellen White where she says, is that a minister who's not working on the plan that Jesus demonstrated in gospel ministry is not doing the work of the minister. 
When I read that, I was so disturbed. I said, you mean to tell me that I'm not doing what Jesus said I should be doing? And now, Danny, I've, 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 I've done it. I've, I've got the, I got the manual. I got the, I got the process. I got the infrastructure. I know, you know, there's, there's a whole lot more to it as you, as you go forward. But you see, now I have the opportunity, not only of having my own lifestyle center, knowing how to go about that, but I also know how to do one-on-one. -on -one. I don't necessarily have to. I can operate out of my own home. If I don't want to do that, uh, I can deal with my church. I can organize my own medical missionary team. We can put on health fairs. There's a, I mean, it's just an unlimited list of things that can be done. So I'm pleased. Uh, I'm, I'm happy. I'm looking forward to uh, going home and implementing this as soon as possible. So. I want to thank the staff for they've been sweet and kind. Which oh that which 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 uh, brings up one last point. One of the things that I also appreciate about you and this program is that you put your heart and soul into it. You not only told us the good, but you all but you also told us the difficulties and the struggles that you had to go through. You put your life right out there on, as an open book and told us what you went through in order to get to where you are. And you brought your family with you. Your family is in it. We see them working in the program. That's an inspiration to us, especially me, to have my family right there with me. Because when you get to heaven, Jesus is going to ask you, where is that little flock that I gave you? And so... That's been an inspiration and other people connected to the program. Uh, I mean, it's just, we could go on and on about the endless uh, positive things that uh, we have received. But again, uh, so you've shown us and you've told us and you've talked about another thing as a pastor. You need to be current in terms of present truth. Present truth talking about prophecy. So now because I love prophecy, I teach it, I can bring it all in together. And the thing about it is that I see the medical missionary work as that entering wedge. And once you've touched somebody's life physically, that prepares the mind mentally to be able to spiritually discern present truth. So it's the total package. And so I, uh, I want to say thank you and I'm, and I'm sure by the grace of God, the people that the Holy Spirit leads me to in terms of ministry, they're also going to be appreciative as well. But I can't thank you enough. And so I just want to say thank you again.